What's up, guys? It's your boy, Killmonger. This is episode two of my Rags to Riches Road to Glory series. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you the tactics that I use for division rivals and for foot champs. Uh, these tactics were given to me by a good friend of mine. I've known him for about six, seven years now. And it was kind of a situation where everyone in my, fr everyone in my friend group plays FIFA. And we were all kind of struggling and no one really knew like what kind of tactics, what kind of instructions, like what we were doing. And he, he threw this out there because he was having some success and we've all been using them since then. That was about two months ago. And since I've had these, I've placed a minimum gold too. So I think that they're pretty good. I definitely suggest that you experiment with it for yourself because with tactics, like it's always a personal preference, but they are very important this year to use. So. We're going to get into it. We're going to break it down pretty simply for you. First thing, which I don't even know if this is a tactic thing. The way... I don't know if this is down to coding. I don't know if this is just something that happened this year when they created the game. But there is a glitch that many of you probably have seen by now. To where if you go to change your tactics in game or if you make a sub in game sometimes it will put the player in the wrong spot or sometimes it won't even change the tactics it'll keep it the same like i've seen situations where people are subbing on say a striker your 80th minute about to go into extra time weekend league game you need to get the win you're subbing on a striker and you sub him on and all of a sudden your striker is where your left back is because you changed your tactics and then you got your left back playing up top and it constantly happens, but when you do your pause menu, it's going to look like he's in the right position, but in game, he's not. Like I said, many of you have probably experienced this already. EA still haven't fixed it. It's been like, what, six or seven patches deep now they still haven't fixed it. I don't know if they literally don't know how, if it's gonna require something to where it would be such a big change that they would have to like reset the game or something. I have no idea, but the way I have mine set up is so that we can avoid this issue as much as possible. So as you can see with my game plans, I have a different formation for each, each, well, I guess you could call it ultra defensive, defensive attacking, ultra attacking. Each slot is a different formation. And obviously each slot corresponds to where I'm at in the game. Like when I'm starting off the game, I always start off in a 4 2 3 one, the wide version. Now, this is gonna, 90% 90, 90 of the time, this is what I'm running because it will counter any narrow formation and it will counter any any 4 3 3 formation. For attacking, I have 4 2 3 one narrow because if you're playing against somebody who is using a 4 4 2, this is gonna counter that beautifully because when your left, left cam and right cam sit inside, it's going to leave a gap between where that guy's left mid and right mid is. And most people who are running 4-4-2 will have the left mid and right mid on stay forward because they want them to go down the wing so they can loop in the crosses. So the cam will sit in the hole between the center mid and the left mid, right mid, and he's just basically going to have free reign to do whatever he wants. So that's why I have this here. And this 4 triple 2 is essentially only here for if I'm down a goal, I'm down two goals, and I got 30 minutes left, and I need to be very direct because essentially this formation is just as direct as you can be while still maintaining some some type of defense. My personal preference, you have to have two DMs this year if you want to be successful or at least two center mids. Some people can get away with doing one. I haven't had any success. If you can get away with using one, more power to you. But me personally, I can't. And then this formation back here, You'll notice it's the only one that has a different offensive style. And this is what I do if I'm up one goal or I'm up two goals and it's the 80th minute and I know that the kid's a good player, I go back to this so that I'm holding the ball the rest of the game. People will say that it's kind of a bitch move to do. Personally, you playing foot champs, you're playing to get the rewards. My philosophy on this game is do whatever you have to do to win. This is what I will use to win when I need to grind the game out in the last 10 minutes and I know the kid's a good player and I could give up a goal at any point. But I'll go into what I normally play and then I'll show you my breakdown. So these tactics on my screen right now is what I'm using for my defensive formation, which is the 4-2-3-1 wide. Well, I guess I should say my, my base formation, 4-2-3-1 wide. 
the attacking 4-2-3-1 narrow and the ultra attacking 4 triple 2 all those formations have this same tactic on the screen now with this actually let me change this because I was editing the video this I have my pressure is on heavy touch I don't get defensive styles really this year they have this on balance which I feel like just leaves you so open it's kind of weird like maybe if you run a five back it would work but I would never use this I drop back is when like if you're really trying to play park like it's basically park the bus on steroids constant pressure is a beautiful tactic and I would use it but the sad thing about it is if you run this for 30 minutes in the first half by halftime your players that don't have good stamina are completely dead and then if you run it all game even if you have players with great stamina by the 60th minute they're completely dead and this is the one game that will punish you if you have tired players in the second half so I don't even touch that press after possession loss this I'm used to use this a little bit but what I started to figure out is if you miss a tackle with this tactic on the gap that you will leave behind you is like the Nile River like it is gonna tear you apart you're probably gonna have to chase back hopefully you have like a Davison Sanchez or a Van Dyke to make a chase down bailout tackle but if you don't you're pretty much just giving away a free goal if you decide to jump a tackle like if you're using this you have to be very disciplined and you can't miss I know a lot of pro players will use it like this, but they're also pro players who don't miss tackles. This is the best defensive style, I think, on this game, which is pressure on heavy touch. I don't know why it does what it does, but essentially, if someone's tic-tac-toe pinging it around, it'll just sit and cover in front of them, and you yourself can manually defend and pick and choose what you want to take. But then if someone's trying to do like a LBY or a long cross or they pass a long ball and like you can tell it's slowing down, the computer AI will automatically step in front to pick it off. So that's why I use this and that's why I run this on every single of my basic formations that I would play with. Now when, you, when we get down to width and depth, I both have these on 5 and 5. Now, my friends want to show me these tactics, and I'm assuming his logic was halfway for width, halfway for depth. I don't know anyone who has them on different, like even most people I talk to that place top 100, they don't, their width and depth is usually the same. I don't know, some people can get crazy with it and do differently. I don't know, if you run like a 4-3-2 on narrow and you have icons all over the place, you might have a narrow team but then your depth is higher up the field because you want to press but me personally the five and five works beautifully because if you go four or three it gives away the time finesse shot at the top of the box which you're playing it's a good player they will rattle those off automatically and before you know it you're down four nil the five cuts that off but doesn't push them so high up that they can just do a rby or a lby and they're just right in through on your defense so five and five keeps it very well balanced and then the pressure on heavy touch essentially lets me manually defend everything except the long slow passes which then the ai will automatically take for me now when we go down to offense this is where the philosophy of balanced i think plays beautifully I don't think unless you're in a specific situation in the game you should be using possession fast build up long ball I don't think you should touch any of those no matter what formation you're doing because balance allows you to go on the attack and you can play how you want like there's people who like to play fast pace sticky taka just ping it around that narrow formations even if you use fast buildup it won't work because every single situation you get into they're gonna go and try to ping it around fast so for example like you can make a tackle with your center back outside of your 18 your left back or your cdm is gonna start charging forward waiting for the outlet pass and you might be in a situation where you want him to come back and then go start your attack like there's no decision it's automatically everything's going forward even even in a situation where you might not need it to go forward and then possession 
This is great for end game when you're trying to kill off the game, but if you run with this all game, essentially the only way I could see this working is if your playstyle is to literally squeeze out one goal and hold the ball the rest of the game. Now I know some people do that, but me personally, I don't find enjoyment in doing that. I only use this when I need to squeeze a game out, but if you're just trying to get one goal in the first 10 minutes and then squeeze the whole game out and end the game with 70% possession, go ahead and throw this on. It's a beautiful tactic, but for me personally, I don't think it works that well throughout the whole game. Long ball, I do not even need to talk about this. Like If you have half a brain when it comes to FIFA, you know this is not going to work. And then we go to balanced. Balanced, I think, gives you the most freedom for your personality. If you're someone who wants to LBY or just cross in the box, you can do that on balance and still be covered on for the counterattack. If you're someone who likes to pass it around and possess the ball, you can still do that on balance because you're deciding where your players are going. If you're someone who wants to play really fast tiki taka, balance, you can still do that because you could set your instructions up to have them do that for you if that's what you want. And that's why I think balance for offense is so beautiful because it gives you the most freedom in the attack and most people I know don't need help attacking in FIFA you need help with the defending now we go down to width again the same concept as width and depth for defense is what I'm using for width and players in the box I always want to have them on the same because me personally I feel like if they're off the way that you're playing is just off so again I have this on five and five it gives me the most 50 50 there's player, enough players in the box to where I'm always having good attacking options when I'm in a position to score, but there's also not too many like this to where if they get the ball, they're just going to loop it back over the midfield and then I'm wide open. So 5-5 five and five keeps it well balanced, makes the build up very easy. Corners and free kicks. Honestly, these two you can mess around with. I have it on 3-3 three and three just because it's right in the middle. But you could go on one and this if you wanted to. You could go, well, I wouldn't recommend going five and five. But you could go up to four and four if you wanted to. And you could still protect your defense. It's just if the guy catches it and he knows what he's doing with like a goalkeeper driven kick, he's probably going to be able to counter you. But three and three works pretty well for me. Now we're going to go to the real interesting part that makes all these attacking formations or all or all my game plans different from everybody else I do not use a single instruction on any of my three attacking game plans I leave it all on balanced and my thought process is I'm putting players in the position based off of work rates not based off instruction so for example Kovacic is my one of my DMs he has high high so when I leave him on completely balanced, the way he's moving is based off of what his card work rate is. When you put stay back while attacking on his high high, me personally, I feel like that just completely messes it up because it's like the game is going to tell him to stay back even though they built the card to go forward and backwards. So I don't understand like what coding or what logic plays into it, but for me it wasn't working at all. And I was winning one losing one so much and i had actually had a negative record because i would have stay back while attacking on cars that had high attacking work rates and for some reason just wasn't working lucas Torreya again completely balanced but he's medium high so naturally i don't even put anything on him and he's staying back covering the front four because that's what the game put on his actual card to do and then both of my wingers are high medium so they will get forward and love and enjoy the attack, but they'll come back enough to give you an outlet. They won't just stick there. Hey, Zeus is high, high. I'd love for him to be high, low, but high, high still works. I leave the striker on balance no matter what the work rate is, except for like, I, I won't use like a low high, but Sturridge is medium low and he has the most goals in my club. So really, I don't think it matters too much about the strikers. Erickson, again, a cam with high, medium. I've tried using Coutinho at cam with high high, it didn't work because he would get caught up where my DMs were. Even if I put on stay forward, still didn't work because he was still somehow coming back. Which made no sense to me because when you put something on stay forward, you would think he would stay forward, but because his card's high high, he was still coming back. So I don't really understand that. And 
with EA putting all this stuff in the tactics, they don't really give you an explanation on what happens when you put someone on get forward and they're high high, or if you put them on stay back and they're high high. Like, it's just weird. So I leave Erickson completely balanced again, but he has high medium, so he stays forward. Now my left back and right back, I use these people a lot when it comes to my passing and my buildup. I like for them to be high medium. I've tried people like Kurzawa and Danny Alves on high low, and they're beautiful with the attacking, and they'll create a lot. But when it comes to defending, I was even I was having a lot of gaps. Valencia, I believe, is a high high, which works because he has the card stats to make it work. He has the pace, he has the strength, he has the agility to go up and down the field all game long. Has the stamina to do that. So I can leave him on balance and he can be at their corner flag and at my corner flag within two seconds back and forth all game. That's why I leave him like that. And then got Allison at keeper. That's pretty standard. But all my, all, all the first three game plans I was explaining to you earlier, there's not an instruction on any player at all. Now for our Ultra D game plan, when you need to squeeze out a game, this is the only one where it is different. So I will have the width and the depth is on 3-3. Three, three. Notice I'm in a 4-4-1-1, four, four, one, one, the second variation. In my opinion, you can use any, any formation that has four or five midfielders and like a straight line across will work when you're trying to do ultra defend because all you want is midfielders to outlet pass. That way you can get the ball down the field very quickly. But I have this on 3-3, three, three, so essentially I'm backing up the whole team. Everyone's going to sit. We're playing defensive, and then when we, do, when we do win the ball back, we have players right there to move forward and, 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 and create. Pressure on heavy touch, still the same, same idea as before. Go down to offense. This is where possession comes into great play, and this is why I use the formation with the 4-4-1-1, this, the second variation, because I have my center mids, my left mid, right mid, and my cam all there, and they will all stick, stick to each other, kind of like triangles or, yeah, essentially like triangles, and everyone's always going to have an outlet to pass to, so we're not losing the ball once we get it back. And we're not necessarily in a rush to get down the field because we're worried about killing the clock. So possession in this situation works. And then corners and free kicks, I don't want anybody in there because I don't want to get countered. Players in the box, three, four, whichever one you do. I have it on four, so maybe Erickson and the striker will get in. If I, if I loop in across, you could put it down to two and have just the striker, whatever your preference is. We go over to instructions now. Now this is where I do use instructions. Essentially, I have Jesus on stay central and stay forward and aggressive interceptions. I don't think it does anything really different, but it's more for my mental that I put it there, I guess, that I think I'm thinking it's doing something different, but I'm not really sure. Every single other card in this lineup is on stay back while attacking or come back by defense. That's the only instruction I use. I don't put on anything else. I essentially am telling the game that I don't want anyone moving forward up the field unless I'm passing the ball up the field with them. And I've had success with this when it's come to squeezing out games. It's made sense when I put it on here. Like I said, I'm only using this in the last 10 minutes when I need to squeeze out a win. But every other player besides Jesus is on comeback or on, or on stay back. And then Jesus, I just have stay central, stay forward, aggressive interceptions. So if they have the ball with their center backs and they're trying to attack me, he's running around like a madman chasing them. And then if I'm getting the ball with anyone, I could just LBY up the field and he'll either make a run or he'll at least do something to waste more time. So this, this is my complete tactic breakdown for what I use for rivals and foot champs. I think in episode three, we're going to have some gameplay. We're going to have some gameplay for you guys to see. And then episode four will most likely be my foot champ rewards. But we're probably going to get some rivals and some foot draft matches in today. So tomorrow I could show you games using these tactics. It is Christmas today, so everyone have a Merry Christmas. And I hope you're enjoying your time. And I should have another video up tomorrow. We're going to do episode three. And then we're going to start to show gameplay and different things I do in game to score goals and then maybe that will help even explain more why, why I use these tactics. So look out for the video tomorrow. 
Once again, like the vid, share the vid, tell your friends about the vid, anything you can do, I appreciate it. I'll have all my social media down below. I'm actually looking to start a pro club series, so if you play pro clubs on Xbox, don't matter you play it this year, don't matter if you played it for seven years, follow me on Instagram and send me a message and we can get you in my team. I got like four or five boys that I usually play with all the time that I can add you to the squad, we can add you to a Discord chat, we, we can set something up. But that's my plan for the future, and I guess I'll check you guys tomorrow on episode three. So y'all have a Merry Christmas, enjoy your families, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.